First of all, I urge you by supplications and prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all people, for kings and all those who are in authority in high positions, that we may, listen to this, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. We're talking about Ukraine. I'm not an expert, and neither are you. And it's hard to believe much of anything that the media has told us or is telling us because they've relentlessly lied to us for nearly two years about nearly everything. They've really shown that we've, they've been lying to us for really much longer than that, but that's another story. I don't trust the media whatsoever. And it's not a, well, I don't trust the media, quote unquote, except for Fox News and Newsmax type of trust. It's I don't trust the media equation. That's what it is. Further still, it's hard to really understand or believe the fact that so many people are 100% behind Ukraine and 100% against Russia, not understanding the two histories of the countries that go back generations, not merely a few months or maybe a few years. Further still, the acts of solidarity are head-scratching to me in many respects. The division that we have in the United States is real and tangible, and we should be working on those things like securing the southern border or talking about inflation or something like that. These are unifying things, but again, our power brokers and those above us really don't seem to care to talk about those things and anything other than these people in this foreign land. They don't want us to see it. In fact, they've erased COVID from the map. There have been wars and battles since World War II, although, you know, to give us pause, we should remember that it is true that no nation has invaded another country in Europe since World War II. That does give us pause. That is a big deal. Further still, we can know, despite the mainstream media and what they tell us, that Russia indeed is the aggressor and the invading party. Yes, Russia has been bad and been told that they're bad for years and years and years. They're destroying not just military targets, but also civilian. This is a heinous evil and goes against a Christian worldview. It goes against a Christian Christian just war ethic in particular. This is bad. We should be praying for these things. <clears throat> what we can and must do is pray for these people particularly and the leaders included. Of course, many like Franklin Graham took flack several days back for saying that we should pray for Putin. But it's like, but should we pray for Putin? Well, yeah, of course we should pray for Putin. Duh. We should pray for Zelensky. We should pray for Biden and everyone else as well. We should pray that these men see their eternal need for Christ, the Lord Jesus, the Redeemer of the world. That would change the situation, wouldn't it? Right? God would ease and change it? Of course. He could. But are we praying? That's the real reason. That's not the only reason. But one of the reasons we should pray. We're going to get to some Bible here in a moment. Uh, but before that, we'll look at some more things that are going to really disrupt this overall situation because war always disrupts. It always screws up. It always messes up. Russia produces 20% of the world's grain. Ukraine produces tons and tons of grain as well. Egypt, for example, is one of the countries that buys up all, almost all of their food from places like Russia and Ukraine. This is massive. This is going to disrupt not just Egypt, many other places as well in North Africa and Europe. Many other countries cannot get the food they need. Now, of course, this means that they're not going to export it, and it also means that the farmers are not going to farm it. They're either fighting, they fled the country, or their crops are ruined, tanks are rolling over it, whatever. War is bad. Further still, Russia is calling this a special military operation, not calling it a war. That's also very suspect. Of course, we know Putin's very suspect, not a great guy at all. Uh, in fact, he said that it's illegal for anyone to use the term war right, in the news and anywhere else. So they can't call a war a war, otherwise they'll face criminal charges. That's also a massive problem. But again, he's a tyrant, right, and this is what tyrants do. Repressive tyranny is something that people have to control everything eventually, one way or the other, and that includes the media. You might already say the media is controlled here in the United States, which it is and it isn't, but that's another video. The point is, Putin is certainly the aggressor. But Ukraine is not without fault, nor is NATO, nor is the United States, to uh, contribute to this chaos. P 
Putin, after all, is telling the world and has been telling the world for years his plans, telling them all these things through multiple speeches that go back not just a month or two or a year or two, but years, saying Ukraine's not legitimate, it's not a real country, it's still part of Russia, etc., etc. They need to be unified and so on. These people don't believe him. NATO, our past presidents, don't believe him. That's a problem. That's a problem, church. That's a problem, people. It is. So we got to pray for our leaders. First Timothy 2. First of all, I urge you by supplications and prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all people, for kings and all those who are in authority in high positions, that we may, listen to this, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who, who desires everyone, all people, to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let that sink in. Another verse, 2 Peter, excuse me, 1 Peter 2, 17. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorance of foolish men. Live in freedom, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil, covering for evil. Live as servants of God, Treat everyone with high regard. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Two more. Matthew 5.44, Sermon on the Mount. I love the KJV here. But I say unto you, love your enemies and bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Use you. We're being used, church. We're being used, people. Ephesians 6.12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, not just against Putin or Zelensky or anybody else, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That's a huge deal. That makes a big difference. It really does. Please go ahead. Uh, if you found this helpful, uh, like and uh, share and comment. Do me a favor on that. And um, yeah, that three-piece special is what I call it there because I stole it from my friend Jason. Uh, I'll probably have to say that until the cows come home, probably. No, Ukraine's situation is wrong. It's bad. It's, 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 we don't want to go to war. We shouldn't want to go to war. Um, it, it, it always messes stuff up. It always causes further division, problems. Yes, sometimes it's necessary. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's necessary. But we should not be uh, striving for it as much as some people think we should be. Um, we should be praying for those in situations, not just the churches. Yes, we should pray for the leaders, as we already saw. We should be praying for those who are in authority for kings and rulers. We should be praying for those who are here as well. And... Um, Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, go ahead and, uh, like I said, do do the whole thing, all the YouTube stuff, and we'll see you on Friday. And be against the world. Take care.